All right, guys, here we are at Birdcage Theater. We're going to be doing the haunted tour. So should be pretty cool. And uh, hopefully we'll get some uh, paranormal activity on the cameras. All right. visit us when you can but he did just that he came out here to Arizona and went to work for Camp Huachuca at the time as an Indian scout in his spare time he's out prospecting he's looking for that silver and gold they do follow each other in the mines well the soldiers are out there telling him hey Ed only rock out there you're gonna find is your tombstone oh I heard a couple of you <laughs> rest of you are gonna be a little tough tonight aren't you <laughs> True story, folks, hence the name Tombstone, because not only did he find that one rock, he found three that totaled about $85 million. 1800s money. So y'all times all the numbers I give you tonight by 30, and that's what you'll have in today's money. But seriously, though, are we so glad he found those rocks? Yeah, because y'all want to watch that movie called Goose Flats. <laughs> <laughs> Those silver mines are really booming. Now this population has increased to well over 18,000 people. Y'all, we really do not know how many people were here. They didn't count that huge lady population that we had or the huge Asian population. So to put this in a little bit of perspective for you, this population was larger than the city of Los Angeles. Late 1800s, those silver mines closed. Now everybody's leaving. They're chasing gold over in California. Others chasing copper over in Bisbee. Now we're back down to that 150 people or so. All the businesses here in town, including this one right here, had to close. Now as people were leaving, they did expect to return. They expected those silver mines to reopen, so they left a lot of their items behind. In particular, behind in this building because it had already survived two fires. One in 1881 and one in 1882. So they knew when they returned, at least their items would be protected from any future fires. Only problem is they didn't return. Those silver mines never did reopen. So when this building closed in 1889, it stayed closed for 45 years. It reopened in 1934 as a National Historic Landmark and Museum. That's when that partition wall right there was added to create that museum in the back. And these original carbide gas chandeliers were converted to electricity. So as we walk through the building tonight, keep in mind it has been kept in as original condition as possible. The floors, the ceilings, the walls, draperies. These are the very same floors that Doc Holliday, Johnny Ringo, the Earth Brothers. Anybody who was anyone walked across these floors in the 1800s. Allen Street right here happened to be 16 blocks long at the time. There were 106 saloons on this street. We were the elite out of all of those establishments. We did have just a little bit of something for everyone. It was a gambling hall, a saloon, a theater, and a brothel all in one. And at times a guy could get a haircut and a shave here. There's your Walmart of 1800s. <laughs> yeah. Those girls would get up here on this catwalk. They'd catch the other gentleman down in the casino floor here in the barroom area and off the streets. They're trying to entice them up the narrow staircase. There's 14 birdcage cribs, seven located on each side of the building. They are similar to small opera boxes, and those are the rooms the ladies worked in. It would only cost that gentleman $25 to go join her. Plus, you see, there's a dumb waiter over there behind Shelly. <laughs> Anything that the ladies wanted, gentlemen needed to have that silver to supply it, or else he was tossed out of here until he could make some more. Yeah, we were only open for eight and a half years, but those were some very busy ladies. When you get a chance, feel free to lean over the glass case, take a look at the top three stairs, 
you can see just how busy those ladies were. Some of those steps have been worn down to the thinness of a poker chip, given testimony to the amount of boots and spurs going up and down the narrow staircase. There's quite a few of them. This bar right here is original. She has been here since December of 1881. Made in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, hand-carved cherry wood. Now, it did take her six months to arrive. The railroad did not want to insure the very expensive diamond dust mirror, so the owners put her on that little boat they called the Star of India, sailed her around the Horn of South America to Wyandus, Mexico, then wagon trained her in. She arrived December 26, 1881, six months after the birdcage had opened her doors. When she arrived, the owners had intended for her to go underneath the catwalk right here to give that illusion of the ladies dancing on top of the bar. You can see there was a minor little issue with that. Yeah, someone did not measure twice and cut once. <laughs> Plan B, they put her here against the wall, nailed these doors shut. This is where she has sat for almost 139 years. Only bar and tombstone who can claim she's the original bar in the original position. 16 gunfights happened in here. 26 people have lost their lives. There's around 140 bullet holes located throughout this entire building. Right down here behind you folks in this bar post, 45 caliber slug, and it is still embedded in there today. From that post, look straight up in the ceiling between the light and the ceiling fan. That is a 32 caliber. I'm going to go right above your head, honey. I don't want to blind you. I don't want to blind you folks. I'm going to go right up here. Right at the camera on the corner of the gold frame is a 45 ricochet. Oh, yeah. I just didn't want to blind you. Back wall, 44 slug is still embedded in here today. I think if I knock on the window, they'll make them squeal like a girl. <laughs> I've always wanted to get one of those little pop-up things to where I just pull the string. <laughs> they won't let me. <laughs> now let me introduce you to the lovely Fatima. She did bring the art of belly dancing to the United States from the Orient, performed on this stage in 1881, went on to fame and fortune, changed her name to Little Egypt, sent this portrait out in 1882 as a thank you for jumpstarting that illustrious career of hers. If you notice, she does have six toes. <laughs> <laughs> and it appears she has a double belly button. Y'all, we only get one belly button. That's one of six bullet holes located throughout that canvas of hers, and she has a knife slash in her skirt right there about her kneecap. Oh, yeah. That knife slash came from a gentleman who was highly intoxicated here at the bar, probably high on opium also. It was really popular back in the 1800s. Said he saw her reflection in the mirror, and she was coming out of the portrait to get him. <laughs> Good stuff. The two show bills have hung in the corner since the 1800s. They are a precursor to a modern-day movie marquee. Each performance that they had, they would just place one poster on top of the other for advertising. These gals happen to be the last performing act here. Lady gymnasts notice a human fly. They would get on their trapeze, do their flips and twists, mount in. They dismounted onto the ceiling and would walk around upside down like a fly. Their secret... They had magnets in their shoes and metal plates in the ceiling. Mm. Very popular. Any of you folks in here staying at the hotel directly across the street here? Yep. Oh, wow. Okay, a lot of you. Yay. Party we bring time. it the whole, whole floor. <laughs> okay. I always ask that. Uh, a lot of times people come out on that balcony late at night. This is after we've gone home for the evening. And a lot of times I'll call the marshal out here because they think someone's broke in. They seen a cowboy in their room last night. In their in here? No, in their room. In oh. their room. Room one. Oh, okay. No, out on the balcony, they're looking at out across here. Yeah. They see movement up on the catwalk. Mm -hmm. They see movement here. So, take pictures. Yeah. <laughs> take pictures, and don't call the marshal unless the wind is broken or if the lock <laughs> off the door. So. Um, when the marshal does come out to investigate, that's exactly what happens. Our alarm is still set, and I still have that lock on the door because I put one on there as I leave. Yeah. Beginning of last year, a gentleman took my Saturday night tour. He and his friends had stayed up there the night before, and he asked me after I said this, he said, you mean, so when you left last night, there was no one else in here? 
Yep, that's what I mean. He said they saw me leave, but they did not realize I was locking up. Said after I left, they saw a young girl come down the staircase. He did not get his photograph. He honestly thought we were still hosting tours. Number one, I am the last one out of here. Two, we're unable to tour upstairs anymore. Those floors are over 139 years old. There are no load or weight bearing supports underneath it. Another lady had taken a previous tour and she was telling me they, her and her friends stood outside this glass window right here and was seeing the lady stand up here on the catwalk. Uh, one evening I did not have a 6.15 tour but I had the 8 o'clock tour. When that happens I stand right here at the door. I was hearing running back and forth across the catwalk and I didn't hear the footstep but I felt the board give when someone stepped right behind me. Y'all are quiet in here. How y'all doing? <laughs> Footsteps is something, what's that? Good. Footsteps is something that we hear quite often in here. My coworkers have also heard them up on the catwalk. They've heard them here in the foyer area. Our manager, Billy, is fourth generation. His family has owned the place since 1934. He'll be in here in the mornings before we get here. The office is right back there. As he's in there, he hears footsteps in the casino floor. He hears footsteps in here. He's been on the phone before and has been told to shh. He's had his hair flicked, and he's been whispered to in his ear. He can't make out what they're saying, but he can still tell that they're whispering. That plexiguard glass crap that's on the bar, it was gone for a while, and now it's back up. Uh, right before they took it down, it had been up there for over a year. Billy came in, he locks the door, he's walking across, and he hears this noise. Something hit that plexiglass. Now, Billy is rather a large man, so he's out here bouncing up and down on the floor trying to see if he can't get that noise to recreate itself, and he couldn't do it. As I said, that plexiglass had been up there for over a year. That was the one and only time he's heard it. None of us have heard it. I saw the hand reach up and grab your yeah. hand. That's what, that's what you should have said. <laughs> make sure you zoom in. Sometimes we will see faces behind them. Now let me give you a good rule of thumb about those orbs. You know, if that light source is following along with your camera, your recording device, it is a light refraction. Mm -hmm. Bones are notorious for it. 
and fit stationary, zooming through at an angle, maybe a little tail behind it, that's going to be your orb. Y'all, if it is doing this crazy crap like this, it's a bug. <laughs> if I can debunk it, I will. I do burst a lot of bubbles. Another job these ladies can have, they were called serving girls. What those girls did, they carried very heavy baskets. You see two of them on the corner of that table right there. Each one was full of liquor bottles. Each drink that they sold, they would keep a percentage of. Y'all, some of these girls were as young as 12 to 14 years old. Jeez. Keep in mind, they had a very different mindset back then. A lot of them, that was half of their lifespan, and they had already been married by that time. <laughs> Any questions? Dice table right here, blackjack table right here. Now we'll talk about the faro table over here in a few minutes. All right, so trivia question. I love trivia. Does anyone remember what was on the curtain in the movie? Don't feel bad, only a handful of people have answered it, and most of them were teenage boys. <laughs> a naked girl. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Fatima, the belly dancer. She was such a huge part of our history, they had nowhere else to incorporate her into the movie, so they did their magic and they put her on the curtain. Uh, one of the stagehands has been seen walking from one side of the stage to the other. I've seen a photograph right up here in this corner, it appears to be a man standing there. Another photograph I have is a reflection of this plexiglass back here, and there's a reflection of a young girl. For her to reflect in this plexiglass, y'all, she would have had to have been standing on the back side of that curtain. Questions so far? So you're staying up here? Yeah, you go to the basement and all. And I was, I was thinking, I was trying to listen to see what sound coming from the See anything? <laughs> See anything? Yeah. What'd you see? It's creepy down there. Is it? All right. Here we go, guys. To the basement. Guys, here we're at the gift shop. See if we see any haunted stuff here. All right, guys, check it out. The bordello room. Oh, yeah, hey, we got to check that out, guys. You guys don't like hot chicks? Look, there it is. If you do like hot chicks, that's even better. Look. Huh? Oh, whips and chains? Oh, yeah. Look at that. Whips and chains? Who likes whips and chains? I like whips and chains. No. Hold on, let me get the, let me get a little bit brighter on the light here, guys. All right, going full bright now. All right, guys, this is the bordello room right here, guys. You know how many bikes there are? Yes, I am. Oh. Check 
Did you find it? Oh, I put it in my notes. I'll look at it. Okay, okay. Yeah, like I don't know. Look at all that money, guys. Big money, millions. All right, guys, there's some more stuff going on here. Like, check it out. I'll get the cameras in here. Here we go, guys. Check out that hot chick. Check out that hot chick. that out. Look at all that cool stuff in there. Alright, oh, look the basement. This is where we were just at earlier. Did you get in there? Anything? What's that? Anything? I see. I see the box or something. Is there anyone else downstairs, hon? Yes. Okay. 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 Alright guys, check it out. But yeah, they're staying in room one and they've seen the shadow of the cowboy over the side of the lamp. Nice. Okay. My niece got to chill up her spine at that same time. Alright. They're sharing the room. Nice. I haven't been, um, I've known a lot of people who stayed up there. A lot of people try to get rooms up there and they're just hard to get. Yeah. So. Did y'all get it the last minute or you had it no, planned for a while? About a year. I was here a year ago, me and my daughter and her boyfriend. And All right, guys, let's go do more of this tour here. Plenty more where this came from. Let's go back up these stairs. Um, Colorado weekend, they've already booked it for next Colorado. They started booking on the floor. Suggestion is very real. 
That is, unless they come up out of my chair and say a bad word or two. It's been known to happen. Uh, one evening I was sitting right here, had a young lady sitting here next to me. She and I both heard it, the two footsteps right here on the step. But then we also heard the, the sound like someone dragged something across it. And I have to say, she and I both come up and said a few bad words. <laughs> now, even though I know I'm in an active building, I know the paranormal happens. When it happens that close, that loudly, it startles a person. And again, I don't have that filter in case y'all haven't noticed. <laughs> so whatever comes into my mind, it pretty much comes out of my mouth. So, uh, One evening, you had a gentleman sitting here. Um, a teenage boy sitting here and Mama sitting next to him. This man come up out of this chair. He scared the crap out of all of us. Teenage boy ended up in Mama's lap. <laughs> Someone touched him on the back of his head. So it happened. Um, what if, right over here where you ladies are sitting, oh, last two or <laughs> <laughs> I want to move. I want to switch. <laughs> oh, you don't want me to tell you? I want to tell you. Someone, okay. <laughs> Someone touched her hair. By the way, they do like ponytails. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they do. <laughs> so oh, if I, and I, these are true stories. So these are true. Okay, any questions before I go over my pesky rules for lights out? <laughs> All right, before I do that, everyone familiar with the K2 meters and how they work? Electromagnetic field detectors? No, can you please go over it? I will. Thank you. Theory behind them is the spirits are electromagnetic energy, and that's what these devices will detect. Green light tells you it's on. You start seeing any other colors light up, you can assume there is some type of energy around it. Mm. Now, in full disclosure, electricians will use these to detect live wires. Electricity can set them off. Also, I keep us away from them. Your cell phones can set them off as well. Mm. We can use these devices trying to ask yes or no questions on them. If they start lighting them up, then if they're responding, then the answers are yes. Last tour, I did not have any responses on these take two meters at all. I don't think I did last week either. But as I stated earlier, the lights out session has been pretty quiet. Now, last tour, there was a lot of footsteps up here on this backstage. So, last weekend, there was not much. Uh, but people have got a lot of evidence in their photographs. So. Uh, do feel free to ask those questions, yes or no questions. Uh, I just ask that you keep your questions polite and respectful, not only to your fellow tour members, but also to the spirits here as well. Please do not ask if you want us to leave. If we get a yes answer, it's going to get awkward in here. <laughs> and keep in mind, y'all, if we were rapid firing those questions, if there's a lot of noises, movements, um, whatever being made behind those questions, you may not hear an answer because sometimes it's a knocking, sometimes it's a footstep. Anybody doing any voice or video recording is going to contaminate their evidence. So this is where I ask that you please be respectful. All right, lights out rules. It's going to get very dark in here. Everyone is going to need to please stay in their seats and remain seated. Now, if you feel like you don't want to spend the next half hour in the dark with the crazy lady up here, I have a flashlight. I will be able to walk you out. Unfortunately, I will not be able to let you back in because I do have to continue on with my tour. However, I do not want to hold anybody who is that uncomfortable in total darkness. I have a bucket behind me. It is not a potty bucket. And for any reason, anyone feels sick to their stomach. The extra energy in the room has been known to cause nauseousness for people who are sensitive to the energy. Suffered and said, well, the elevation got to you, whatever. To say, hey, Karen, bark bucket. I promise you, I will not judge you unless you miss the bucket. If you miss the bucket, you'll be judged a tiny little bit. Then I'm going to charge you extra and make you help me clean. <laughs> Photography. The first 20 minutes of lights out, do feel free to take any photographs, do any voice or video recording, but please turn those flashes off and dim those lights. Otherwise, we are just seeing flash, 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 and we're all seeing orbs. Or, we're seeing your face light up in that camera, and quite frankly, yo, that is pretty creepy. <laughs> Last eight minutes, I'll let you know when. Feel free to flash away. Camera wide flashing. No other flashing going on. <laughs> Not that kind of establishment any longer. Last but not least, be very careful about touching your neighbor if your neighbor does not know you're going to touch them. Because one of two things are happen, or both. One... Your neighbor is going to jump and say bad words, which is going to cause the rest of us to do that. And or two, we are all going to hear a slap as you get the crap slapped out of you. <laughs> Both has been known to happen. 
Questions? You know, like this is Don't go nowhere. We'll be right back. Don't be scared. If you hear the door open and shut, don't say anything. I'm in. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Is there a presence here? Okay. <laughs> what happened? I shut the door. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like what? Next time, let me know. Oh, sorry. I shut the door. <laughs> Do you like the door shut? I do. <laughs> Anyone in here with us tonight? You know by now the green lights around the room are not going to hurt you. No one in here wants to hurt you. We'd just like to talk to you. Thank you for letting us come in and visit with you. Can you let us know you're here? Can you give us a sign that you're here? scared of us? Should we be scared of you? I love you. Did you play poker here? Did you poker here? couple of devices going in here. If you try to talk really loud, maybe they can hear you later on. Can you tell us your name? We'd love to hear your story.
Do you enjoy the wine in the cellar? Were you shot in right, here so in birdcage? Whoever's sitting in the chair making the knocking noise, please knock it off. I've been doing this long enough to where I know who's knocking in their chairs and when it's paranormal. Now, some of you, you may not believe that others do, so please be respectful. Okay, go ahead with your question. I'm sorry. Uh, were you shot here in birdcage? Or did you die in the streets of Tombstone? Are there any madams here? Children? Dogs? There is a spirit dog here. He was shot in one of your performances. Mm -hmm. um, people have felt his nose along their ankles and knees. They felt um, cold spots circling their legs. And um, we've heard his little nails clicking across the floor. How do you like living in Tombstone? Is Tombstone a nice place to live in? Did you find silver in Tombstone? Are you upstairs? Hmm. Oh, there's steps upstairs. Yeah. <laughs> what was it? 
Any steps, steps over here on the left side? Can you come downstairs? I heard it, but I'm trying to debunk it. Still playing poker down in the basement. There are your chips on the table. Dealers fixing the deal. Who's the best poker player in the world? Who's the best poker player at the table right now? <laughs> All right, so we have about eight minutes left. If you folks want to start taking photographs using your flash, feel free to do so. Now, please, stay flash beforehand, though. There. Mm -hmm. Is that what? Something touched my arm. Something touched your arm? Yes. Yeah, you're sitting right there next to me. It wasn't me, I, I promise. Asked <laughs> I asked him. Okay. All right. All right, y'all check those photographs really well. You see some of the photos that I showed you, they're really easy to miss unless you're really looking for them. Unfortunately, our time has come to an end. I really hope everybody had a good time. I know I sure did. You don't have to worry about anyone or anything following you home. They've been here for a very long time, so we do think that they're happy here. Um, besides, the only ones who do have to fear the most are the ones who forget to tip your host. <laughs> Folks, what we'll do now is we'll all walk out front together, then I will unlock the door and let everyone out at one time. Thank you so much. Y'all enjoy the rest of your weekend. Did you feel it? You didn't feel anything? My whole right leg was cold. I heard you guys saying about a draft or something yeah, up there. My whole, yeah, my leg was cold and feet were like ice. Dip her, give her a couple bucks. Give her a couple bucks. Give her a couple bucks. Yeah, we heard something. Yeah. And then, like a lot. And then the couple next to me, they kept laughing. I don't know if like, like if maybe uh, the ghost got into them or something. Charlotte, tip her out. Oh, sorry, shit. Um, 
I'm trying to capture something here, guys. I was really excited my first ghost tour, you know? Yeah, yeah. Alrighty guys, here's the last of it right here. As we're up with the all the girls would go up to. If you can ask what you saw on the stairs. No no, I was against the back wall. It was just light. It was a shadow. Yeah, it was really dark and then it kept lighting up and then getting dark and then it just stayed light. But no, I just know there was someone standing behind me. I just don't feel it. There it is. Did you have a good time, Charla? Oh, yeah. So what, Definitely what? felt some sort of presence. We were sitting there in the dark, complete dark. My whole right leg got really cold feeling. Uh, and then we heard, heard some footsteps over to the left of us. Uh, that was up on top of where the brothels were. We heard footsteps. I mean, it was, like, totally, like, legit. Like, like highly recommend just taking a tour and checking it out. Our tour guide also said that she saw a shadow as well which so. was coming from the direction where i was getting that cold felt the cold the coldness on my leg because i was sitting next to like a, a stairway and she was sitting next to it and you didn't tell anyone what was happening at the time but i felt the coldness and then after the tour she said hey there was a presence on that step and then i was like that's probably why my leg was cold so it's definitely it's legit Legit. Yeah, come here. If you guys are in for a spooky scare, the Birdcage Theater is definitely the place to be. So, authentic, haunted, haunted facility. Like, so. I had my doubts, but after doing that tour, I think I'm a believer. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I didn't see anything. I kept asking a lot of questions. Um, I did ask a lot of random questions, and I'll put the audio um, on it. So, I'll, I'm going to have to come through it. Hopefully, I hear something. Uh, hopefully, I got something back. But... Uh, uh, it, it was. Sure we're gonna have to really look at them, like really yeah. close, and. Hopefully, yeah. we got something on the mics. If we didn't get anything on the video, which because we couldn't operate the videos inside where they went lights out, but I did turn on my phone. Um, I wish I had a more of an external mic for the phone, but it is what it is, um, and uh, we'll see what we got on the audio. So, real quick, guys, we just experienced our first ghost tour here with our host Karen. Did an awesome job. So Aww, when you guys you. come on down here, get with Karen. She did a fabulous job, guys. So we look forward to, hopefully we get some spirits on the video. What should they do on the channel? Subscribe. Subscribe to the channel. There it is, guys. <laughs> we'll catch you guys later.